Hi, this is Lance from Langchain. This is part 16 in our Langsworth Evaluation Series. So we've been talking about RAG evaluation, and we covered a few different ways to do it. We talked about evaluating the answer relative to a reference. We talked about hallucination grading of the answer. We talked about retrieval grading of the relevant documents. Um, now, there's one thing that you might have noticed that I don't like about at least two of our approaches here. So for the hallucination grading and retrieval grading, we had to do something that's kind of ugly. If you look at a RAG pipeline, remember we returned answer and the documents both from a RAG pipeline. And then with both of those things returned, we're able to perform evaluations. But this is kind of unrealistic, right? Most RAG pipelines will only return, for example, the answer and maybe some other ancillary information, but it's rare that you'll also return the retrieved documents, or at least you don't want to enforce that requirement to do evals. So I'm going to show a trick that makes this a lot easier. And what I'm going to show is the ability to actually just in our evaluation code, reach into our trace and grab certain components, no notably, for example, the documents from the trace itself. So I'm going to kind of have this side by side. So here's our rag chain, like we've talked about before. And here is some updated evaluation code I'm going to show over here. And what I'm going to show is here's an updated document relevance grade. Now, we did this previously, but here's a different way to do it. And you're going to see something kind of interesting. This code up here allows me to basically reach into the trace and fish out the retrieved documents. So if you look at our chain, there is a function retrieve documents that gets the documents. So why can't I you know, reach in and grab those and just isolate those? Well, we can do that, right? So you can see all you do is this is my eval code. So this run, remember there's run an example. So those are the two objects that are passed into our evaluator. We talked about that a lot before. So from this run, I can just isolate child runs and you see I call this get answer. Now each of my functions that's decorated with traceable then is basically retrievable using this name. So the function name here maps to the run name over here. So when I basically call this child runs from my overall run, um, I can isolate, for example, um, all runs name get answer. So that's going to basically pull this function here, right? So I get my rag pipeline run. I'm going to call that. Now I can then call this child runs from that object. And if you think about it, inside get answer, I do call a few other functions, including retrieve docs, as we see right here. So I can basically just say, okay, now get me the run retrieve docs from the children of this initial run. That is then going to get the output of this function right here. And you can see just I then call retrieve run dot outputs. I get the output and those are just the documents. And I basically am extracting the text from them. And in addition, I'm also going to get my question. So now I have what I need. I've been able to fish out the documents from my trace. I have my question and the rest of this is actually pretty simple stuff. We've kind of talked about before. I'm going to find a data model for my grader. So in this case, I'm just going to say, hey, you know, give me a binary score for relevance of retrieved documents. The binary, I mean, this is a pedantic object. So, you know, give me a binary score of one or zero. I'll use GPT-3.5 Turbo as my grader. I'm going to use structured output using this uh, grade document schema. Um, and then here's my grader prompt. We saw stuff like this before, you know, if they're relevant, pick one, otherwise zero, right? Grade prompt, I invoke my retrieval grader with question and document text. Um, again, I set my chain up here um, using grade prompt and plumb that to my LLM bound to my structured object here. Um, and then I just return the score as an int, of course. Uh, now this should already be an int because of the pedantic right here, uh, but I can again, just ensure, ensure that's the case. Um, and that's really all I'll need to do. So same will apply for hallucination grading. It's basically the same idea. I can get my documents just like we did before. In this case, I just get the generation from rag pipeline run dot outputs. In this case, I took um, the, uh, in this case, it was um, retrieve run uh, inputs dot question. So that's like the input to my function. In this case, I'm grabbing the output of my rag pipeline, which is the generation. Again, setting a data model. In this case, great hallucinations, same kind of idea, different grader prompt, same flow though. Um, my hallucination grader will return one or zero, just like we saw before. 
Um, and again, I return my score. And that's really it. Um, and I have run all that already, but I can just show you, kick that off again. So all I've done is define these two functions. They are then passed as evaluators. It's nice and simple. And that's running right now. So I can go over to my data set. And again, we ran this on rag test LCEL. So I can show you over here. Uh, I'm in my data set. And here's a run that I just ran. And what I can see here is that, just like we saw before, um, show, I'm showing feedback from all scores. My um, grades for both are shown here. I can zoom into each one if I want to. Uh, so I can actually investigate the grader itself. And I can confirm that. And you know this is actually the grading logic that we just defined in that function. I can confirm that it's it's reasonable. Um, that's good. I can go back. Um, and again, we can see this is now really simple. So I've been able to evaluate both answer hallucinations and document relevance in one simple step. Um, and I've used this nice ability to fish out intermediate things from my trace in this case, documents, and I just use them in my grader directly. So this is really convenient because I don't need to define a pipeline or chain that outputs them and then use them independently. I can just reach into my trace and get whatever I want and use that as part of my evaluator. So it's a really useful trick and a more realistic way that you would do some of these types of evaluations in particular, like we had talked about before, things like uh, document grading or answer solution aid grading that require this intermediate of uh, this in these intermediate documents, uh, it's much more convenient to actually just reach into the trace and grab them rather than having the requirement to output them from uh, my chain, which is unrealistic in many kind of RAG applications. So again, this is a very useful trick for doing evals in particular for RAG, um, where you can just reach into traces and get intermediate objects you need for the evaluation. Thanks.